Nothing major on the injury front for today, and the report will come out this afternoon, but we'll have a couple guys that uh, we may rest or limit, but um, don't see don't see anybody likely missing time this weekend, so we're still in a pretty good spot. Um, again, normal, normal nicks and bruises as we played a couple games now, and um, so there'll be some things, guys that are limited or sit and all those things, but as of right now, I feel pretty good about availability for this weekend. Other than that, I'll let you guys fire away. After last week, the NPF gives up what, 13 pressures. Mm -hmm. Is it just on him to be better, or do you start having to, to game plan to, to help him out a little bit? Um, it's both. It's both. I, I can do a better job helping, um, and then he can do a better job executing. I think that they would all say the same thing. There's 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 so many good rushers in this league, and there's, and there's good players, and um, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in, in getting help on either side. Um, we did a little bit of it in the game. Probably should have done a little more of it, but – yeah, there's, there's a time and a place to help uh, in the rush. Uh, there's a time and a place where we have to get five out in a pattern, and, and that's a part of it. And, um, you know, it's a kind of a give-and-take balance, but certainly uh, not something that uh, I'm not used to. We've, I've had to help on both edges quite a bit over the years, and that's just a part of playing offensive football nowadays with these uh, these guys that play on the other side. So uh, certainly has work cut out for them with uh, Rashawn Gary as well. So it's a, it's a challenging front to play against this week. Up here, I guess, earlier in the week, he talked about – different techniques that, that Bill was teaching the, the O-line guys. Does that take maybe a, you know, a game or two, even, even though they've been doing it off-season training camp, does that maybe take a game or two to adjust a little bit to some of those techniques? Yeah, I think all, I think all growth and improvement takes time. Um, There's certain things that, that might be more natural than others for certain guys. It, it sort of varies player to player. And I think that um, those things – come with actual game reps you know you can do as much as you want in practice you can simulate it you play against your own team uh, but there's different styles and different body types and different rush counters and there's a lot of things that go on and and for those guys it's just it's just banking of reps um, you know obviously you don't have forever to make improvement but um, there does take some growth there is some unique uniqueness to it and some uh, technicalities that only improve as you as you get more shots at it that you and, and your dad and, and Will need to grin and bear it and be patient? Um, there's an uh, element of that. There's an element of, of patience. There's an element of um, we got to get better fast. You know, there's some urgency to get better, and I think that's the most important point is that um, the urgency to improve quickly is, is what makes teams in the NFL. If you can get better quickly, uh, you can make improvements, make corrections, and not repeat mistakes, you're going to have a, a pretty good chance uh, to improve at a, at a rate that's uh, going to give you a competitive advantage. Um, but we, we need to improve, certainly. Um, there's, a, again, a patience part, but there's also an urgency part where uh, things got to get better quickly. Along those lines, when you went back and watched this week's or this past week's game with Will and you point out, you know, maybe the ball would be better here than there, those sorts of things, was that considerably less than after the, watching the week one game? Yeah, I thought everything that Will's improvement from week one to week two to me was – um, was noticeable. Uh, everything about how he moved in the pocket, um, where he had his eyes, just everything about playing the position was better um, in week two. I think offensively as a whole, there's a lot of things that were better uh, from week one to week two. Uh, we got to get a lot better between week two and week three. Um, and that's just the, that's the nature of the NFL, especially in the early part of the season, is how quickly you can, um, you can improve your team and what you do well. I'm really pleased with how he played for the most part, and that didn't change after we watched the tape. And every week you're going to go through with a quarterback, and there's going to be a handful of plays that you could say, hey, what if you, you could have gone here or here? Here's, here's some things that could have been different. So that's a normal process, uh, whether you throw for 350 yards or 150 yards. That doesn't change. So that part is, is pretty consistent. But I thought that Will made a really nice improvement from week one to week two. Sometimes we conflate the short passing game with the quick game, and uh, looking, you guys are, are near the bottom of the league in terms of passing plays that develop in two and a half seconds. Uh, but the short passing game has been effective for you so far. So, is there an emphasis on speeding up the the short, quick game in order to take some pressure off the offensive line? That's all part of the equation. Um, I would say sometimes what gets confused, uh, gets taken off as as either quick game or, or short passing is. Um, you know, we pushed the field a couple of times in that game where we didn't have the routes or we didn't have the time to get to the routes to develop, uh, and the ball gets checked down. And sometimes that gets looked at as a, a quick game or we're not throwing the ball down the field. Now, the call is to throw the ball down the field, but the 
the pressure, the coverage, whatever it may be, the ball gets checked down. Um, and so it comes off as a, as a play where the yardage isn't far down the field, but the intent was to throw the ball down the field. Sometimes you don't get that. And um, part of Will's growth and development has been that I tell him all the time, I'll call as many deep shots as I can during the game and deep play action and things. If, as long as if it's not there, we don't force it and we check the ball down when we have a chance and then I'll call it again. Um, and so sometimes those things get skewed. But yes, there is an element of, of the quick game that that does help when you're when you're having struggles up front that you don't put those guys in position and have to hold on to blocks for for long periods of time and so that's definitely something that uh, we mixed in and, and will be part of what we do offensively with Hopkins and I think it was 26 snaps I know you're trying to get as much as you can mm-hmm. when he's on the field but when you're calling these plays there are times when he's open he may not have been the first read but how do you approach that with, with Will to get him to make sure that you're maximizing when Hopkins is out there on the field yeah, that's on me to get him as the primary more often than I have. Um, there's going to be plenty plenty of that as we move forward. And the other part of it for Will is that I don't ever tell Will who to throw to. You know, I, I, that's a you start forcing balls to players because you feel like you need to get it to them. That's when you can get yourself in trouble as a, as a quarterback and as a play caller. Uh, so you call the plays you think are best suited for what you're going against. You have players in mind you're trying to get the ball to. Um, but ultimately – you know, the progression dictates where the ball goes and, and anybody can get the ball in any given play. And that's the part of it that I think matters most. Um, so, yeah, there were some plays that, that Hop was the primary. He was covered as a primary. Uh, the ball went elsewhere. Um, but that's on me to do a better job of, of putting him in position to get the ball more frequently. And, and again, as he's he's felt good and feels healthy and ready to roll, that, that role will increase and, and you'll see more of that. There were some plays where he, he may not have been the primary but was open. Do you go over that and just say, hey, man, make sure you look there? How do you handle that part of it? Um, just like you would any other play where, where the ball goes. And sometimes plays look open um, because the ball gets thrown and guys react. Other times they, they are open. You know, that, that's a real part of it. And so you go through the process and you say, why would you throw it here? Here was the read. Sometimes it's as simple as read one was open and we took it. Um, and then, sure, he's coming open on a shallow cross across the field. He's the third part of the progression. Uh, and had we gotten there, the ball would have would have likely went there. Uh, so that that's how those things work. And you just coach through those processes, um, pointing out what what coverages these certain routes come open on, and try to have a better feel. The more you reps you bank on concepts. But yeah, there's uh, I never tell a quarterback who to throw it to uh, because that clouds their judgment and their vision on what we're trying to get accomplished schematically. And so. Um, it's more on me to put Hop in the spots where he's likely to get the ball. The third highest first read rate in the league right now, is that by design? Is that something that you're wanting to see him get through his progression more? And how much of the time he has to do that, is that an impact on it as well? Uh, it's it's a combination of things. There's uh, We've had some first reads that have been open. Uh, that's part of it. Um, there's some times where he's been forced to get the ball out a little bit quicker because of some of the pressure. And then some of it may be, work through the progression you know it's just kind of a threefold approach and and I would say that it's not it's there's every game is going to have those plays in it that's not like unique to a bad game or a good game that's every game um, and so we just you just keep coaching through the progressions and keep talking about it and um, eventually those plays as, as you bank reps they become more comfortable and quarterbacks are able to get from one to two to three a lot faster because they've gotten reps banked on on the concepts and um, that usually comes with with time um, and repetition 80 percent three wide I don't know what it was week one, but you got two inactive tight ends. Mm-hmm. Is a time going to come where you need more there, or is it uh, advantageous depth, or can they help you on special teams where you're struggling? Yeah, those are all all things that that we've had conversations about on where those guys could help us. Um, you know, they sort of play the same roles as linebackers do in special teams coverage for the most part. Um, and we got some linebackers that do a pretty good job. Um, so, yeah, right now they're advantageous depth, I think is the way to put it. Um, they're guys that we think can develop into good players and can help us. We may need them at some point this season, um, so they're always on the ready for that. And, again, we've we've had a, a handful more of our heavier personnel pop up uh, at, in the second half last week, and if that's something that we potentially lean more into, they could they could find some roles. So um, as of right now, with, with everybody healthy, they're, they're depth and developmental players. You're probably along the same lines, but hindsight 2020, you guys let go of some kind of key special teams guys in the, in the 53. Any <coughs> regrets at all that, that maybe you should have had a guy and, you know, and, and uh, given some of the special team situations that, that have popped up? Um, no, not from a personnel standpoint. You know, I felt pretty good about the guys that have been in there and the guys that we kept. Um, so I don't, I don't look back at that with any, any regret on, on the roster construction. 
Coach, and Josh Jacobs, and how were they able to run the ball so well Sunday when, when people knew it was coming? Uh, well, two, two things. One, uh, Josh Jacobs is a very good player. Um, I think they do a, uh, their offensive line, I think, is, is probably underrated. Um, I, thought, I think they do a nice job, both in the run and pass pro. Um, and then ultimately, I think that offensive staff there is, is high level. Um, they do a really good job. Uh, Matt's an excellent play caller and, and uh, play designer and schemer and put his guys in great position uh, to have a chance to win the game. And they executed it very well. But I've always been a fan of, of Matt and the things that he's done offensively uh, and the way that he leads that team there. I mean, they've done a really nice job for, for a number of years now. So that's the biggest reason to me is they got good players and a good scheme. And um, they did a nice job making it come to life. And I thought Malik did a really nice job of keeping the team in position to win. You know, he didn't he didn't turn the ball over and um, basically executed exactly as, as I'm sure he was asked to. So uh, really a tip of the cap to all those guys on offense. They did a great job uh, on their offensive staff, on their offensive um, roster of, of executing a, a well-designed plan. I know different roster means different schemes, but when you watch that, how similar was what they were doing with Malik to what you might have envisioned doing with him? Oh, there's there. definitely some things that they that they've that they did with him that um, that we did elements of as, as he was here. Um, but yeah, they, they've opened up some, some things that they probably don't do a lot of with, with Jordan Love, uh, the, but that Malik has a unique skill set for. And, um, I thought it was, I thought it was really well designed with the quarterback runs, the RPOs, um, all the motions and the different styles of runs. It was, uh, very, very well designed. Since the trade at all? I did not. I know Bo and Nick both have, um, they both wished him luck before his first start, and, and I'm happy for him that he had a chance to go play. That was pretty cool to see. I mean, everyone knows Malik. Malik's a phenomenal, phenomenal person. Um, loved being around him, loved having him here. Um, and, he, and he went to Green Bay for the opportunity that he's been given now is to, to play. And um, he's done a nice job of it. Passing stats are down across the league compared to years past. I'm curious why you think that is and how you view your play calling against that trend. Yeah. Um, this is probably a, a much deeper conversation than, than right here for a, a, a quote, but um, I think the, the proliferation of teams playing with, with shell defense, with two high defenses, um, they're doing a really good job of stopping a run against with two high defenses. A lot of it has to do with the front movement. Um, teams are doing a really good job of, of keeping everything bottled up. Um, I think the difference in quarterbacks, there's a lot of young quarterbacks playing. I think that's part of it. Um, it's early in the season, which is the other part, you know, there's some, there's some teams finding their footing. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons I think that there's a down offensive performance. I think part of it is just the style of defense has changed in the last couple of years and they're doing a nice job on defense. And I think you see the, the mismatches, mismatches that you have. I mean, these defensive lines, um, are it's every week. I feel like you're going against defensive lines that have three and four guys that are real problems. Um, and they, they're good. They're hard to block, and that's another part of it. So that, to me, is, is a very, 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 very general note on what I think it is. I'm sure there's lots of opinions out there, but, um, you know, I think there's a there's a definite shift in, in the defensive structures and how they're being played. Traylon's gotten quite a few snaps in the first two games, only has one catch for two yards. <clears throat> What's kind of been the problem in getting him unlocked, so to speak? Um, I wouldn't say that it's been a problem. It's just the the ball has sort of gone elsewhere. I mean, there's been a couple of times just like D Hop where he's been open and the ball has gone somewhere else. Um, that's just sort of part of, of playing receiver in a in an offense where there's three receivers on the field. Um, but yeah, I would I would have loved to see him come down with that catch on Sunday. That would have gone a long way to probably not asking that question. You know, I think there's a production part of it that's uh, we got to find a way to get him some production as well and. Um, Again, I think just the general passing game has to be more productive, and once we get to that point, I think it'll it'll even itself out eventually. But um, you know, through two games, we've not been uh, as good in the passing games. I think we're capable of. Built in a day, a lot of new coaches, a whole bunch of new players. How hard is it to stress patience and trust and everything to both your players and also yourself? Um, I don't have any problem with it. Um, I and I don't mean that in a to come off the wrong way, but I, I'm very confident in, in our process. I'm very confident in our coaches. Um, I'm very confident in, in what we do and how we do it. Um, that also goes for the players. I'm incredibly confident in the players that we have, the players that we've added. Um, I believe very much in what those guys stand for, for what the locker room represents, um, for how they come to work every day. All of those things 
uh, we don't have the, the tangible results yet that come with wins, um, but all the other things are working the way they're supposed to. And that part gives me a ton of faith uh, in the process. And I actually just talked to our leadership group today that, you know, the definition of faith is, is belief in something without proof. And uh, right now we don't have any proof that we're doing things the right way when it comes to wins and losses, but um, that's, that's coming. And I believe in all those things very, very much. And I believe in my ability. I believe in the ability of people in this building um, to make sure that, that we get things squared away and keep pushing forward. So that part I don't have a problem with. There is, there is some growth. There's some things that we have to get better at in a hurry. Um, there's a patience part, but again, like I said earlier, there's also an urgency part that goes into whatever we have to get better at. We have to get better at it fast, um, because there's still good teams every, every week we go out there. There's good teams. They, you don't play right. They're going to beat you. And, and we got to be on the other end of that where, uh, we take advantage of a team that, that doesn't do things the right way enough. And so it's a process that's ongoing, but trust me, there's plenty of urgency to get to that, uh, to get to that landmark. And I would love to come in here on Monday after a win. I'd feel really good about that. With Ernest Jones just to come in here, learn this defense as quickly as he has, and be a factor two weeks in. Um, very impressed, but not at all surprised by that. I mean, he was a captain in LA, he's a four year starter. Uh, he's a really good football player. And for whatever reason, uh, they felt like uh, they that he was somebody they could afford to let go of. And um, I'm glad they did, but I played against them. Previously, I know what he's capable of, and, and to see, to be able to add that caliber of player in person uh, has been a huge uh, benefit to our defense. And he's really done a nice job. You know, it's a very different style of defense, and so learning a bunch of new things and new words, it's like learning a new language to some degree, and uh, he's, he's done a great job. So all the things I expected from him, I've seen, um, and it's been fun to see him get more comfortable and get to know the team better and, and really have fun playing football got hurt and so that may change things this week or next but when they were both healthy uh, in week two you, you still saw the similar split that we saw from them in week one do you stand by wanting to get them as 50 50 as possible or do you feel them kind of sit, settling into different roles no I, I do feel the same way I, I feel like I would still like to get more touches for Tajay I think one of the things we have to do is is when we've gotten first downs when we've gotten that first first down, I think we've moved into scoring position just about every time. Our issue has been the three and outs um, and keeping drives alive. We we need more we need more opportunities. We need more drives. We need more first downs. And and I think that'll even itself out over time. Uh, in a small sample size, it feels like there's a big disparity. I don't think over time it'll look like that at the end. Um, and then obviously him getting hurt in the game skewed that some as well. So. I do see it. I see Tajay as a really impactful player and, and a guy that we have to make sure that uh, has his requisite touches to help our offense. Tajay, one, two, you have to hold back a little because I know he will play probably with a broken ankle if he does. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a he's a tough he's tough minded. Um, he's physically tough, and so when they have moments that that require a little bit of restraint and some rest, um, we have to sort of save him from himself in that regard. And uh, he doesn't like it. He does not like to rest. He does not like to take practice time off or game time off, but uh, it's in the best interest for him as as you try to make sure he's available and a viable option for 17 games. Play just a handful of snaps. So do you an anticipate that going up? A lot will a lot of be based on matchups, opponent? Yeah, I anticipate that going up, regardless of opponent or matchup, that should go up. Um, we'll see how much. I, I don't. I hesitate to give you know numbers and all that, but yeah, that'll go up. You'll see more of Jamal this week. What is pretty visibly upset after the game the other day. Just this week, seeing him, talking to him, um, how's his body language been, his demeanor, all that? It's been great. Um, you know, he's he's hurt. He's He does not want to put that kind of performance on tape. Um, I don't, I think he's, uh, you know, I, I don't mean to say that it doesn't bother him, um, but that's the nature of the NFL. You're going to have bad plays uh, and you have to move on to the next one, whatever it is, whether it's next game or the next play, the next series. Um, he's done a nice job of doing that. And so I think he's he's moved on. He's, he's still trying to learn from mistakes, not to repeat them. And I think he's in a good place. So I'm, I'm really happy uh, with the, the mental toughness he's shown, the resiliency he's shown. Um, and that's just – that's playing quarterback in the NFL. It's every week. There's going to be things that you want back. And you got to respond. And I think that he will. The quarterback is a design part of the run game. How much does that test, I guess uh, – gap integrity discipline those types of things for you that's the name of it is the discipline you know you have to make sure your your gap your gap integrity is is solid because there's a lot of things working there's motion there's things trying to get you out of your gaps 
Um, there's a there's a discipline and focus aspect of playing when the quarterback's involved in the run game uh, because you have to fit it right. You have to be assigned right. It's, it's kind of your traditional option football, if you will, where um, everyone has has keys and places they're supposed to be. And the discipline teams play well against those styles of offense. And um, if you find yourself out of a gap or undisciplined, you pay for it. And um, that's a huge part of, of playing the, the quarterback run game in general around the league is is making sure that, that you're where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. How much, is your oh, corner, how much is your corner play and the fact that those guys can, you know, stick with a guy, allow you to maybe load the box more when you need to against a guy like Jacobs? I mean, those guys have played well for us so far. I think even the, the encouraging part is we, we have lots of room for improvement as well there. And um, I love what they bring. They do everything that we've hoped they would do. Uh, when they came in here, and I think that's the cool thing about the the players we brought in in free agency is that they've all um, they've all come in and played the roles we envisioned for them at the level that we thought they would, which isn't always the case in free agency with Calvin and Tony and Lloyd and and Cheeto and Legarius and uh, Quandre. Those guys have all really come in and filled really inc- roles in a, at a, at a high level for us, and. Um, that's encouraging, and I, I really think that those guys give us some flexibility in the secondary too, because they're they're who they are. Um, we can do a lot more things schematically when you got corners that can go cover. Do you, do you prepare? Do you, do you prepare the, you think the league's going to be the starter on Sunday? Do you prepare for that? We, you know, I, I, to me, it, it doesn't matter. Um, we have to prepare to go play the Packers' offense, whether it's with Malik or with Jordan Love. Um, Schematically, it varies a little bit, but at the end of the day, we have to do we have to do our jobs well. You know, we have to execute, be fundamentally sound. Uh, and and you, if you spend too much time worrying about that part of it, uh, you lose track of, of what we need to be uh, for our identity and our defense. Um, certainly, watch playing the tape on Malik. Be ready for Jordan Love if he if he somehow ends up playing. We'll be ready for it. Um, but you never just assume in this you know that that all of a sudden the guy's going to be out or not until until you're told he's out. So. We'll be ready for both players. You know, got plenty of film on Jordan from from last year and from the first game, and uh, you got film on Malik, and we practiced against Malik, so we know we know Malik well too. And um, but again, it's only going to be about how we execute, and I think that that's the most important part is not to get too enamored with who's behind center, but more about uh, how we do our jobs. NPF had a, a, a fantasy sponsorship deal announced this week. Uh, what, I, like I know a, it's not, huh? What? It, a what? A, he's aligned <laughs> with some fantasy. Oh, I, 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 I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's not gambling, but it's you know in that genre, if you will. He's been suspended under the gambling policy before. Yeah. And it comes out the week after he's got a. Poor, I, I'm just wondering if you have any feeling for the timing of that or any concern. No, I mean usually I, I try to stay out of out of guys off the field businesses as long as it doesn't affect our team, but. Um, yeah, he's. I mean, he's 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 grown up, and he's free to as long as it's not a, a violation of the NFL rules. He's free to enter into whatever business agreements he he wants to, and that's his prerogative. I don't have any personal opinion about it. Um, you know, guys have lots of other things that they do, and yeah, I'm sure the timing had nothing to do. I mean, I'm sure he didn't agree to it this week. So those are probably things that have been in the works for a while. Just the timing maybe feels weird, but I'm sure it's something that has been in negotiations or discussions for a while. So no, I have no real opinion about it the area that you're trying to work on improvement for week three just situational football and knowing the times when you have to be uber careful with the ball you know whether that's when you're in scoring position and a third down where the throw that you're trying to make isn't even going to get you the first down um and just having that hit my brain a little more quick and when i'm watching film not just being like oh this is the coverage this is the down and distance this is the play what's the answer it's adding the fold of as a quarterback, what's the best, smartest thing to do? What's something that you need to keep in your mind because of the situation that can help your team and protect the ball? Um, so I'm just trying to be consciously every day, just think of those situations and, and get better in them. You feel like you saw things quicker, uh, saw the field better maybe week two compared to week one? Yeah, no, I think, I, think I uh, saw and felt everything very well. Um, you know, I feel like I, I had a good idea of what I was going to be getting and what the answers to, to that would be based on that. And trusted my eyes and really liked uh, you know some of the balls that I put on tape. So feel good about how I was seeing everything. Just unfortunate a couple of those plays uh, you know affected the game. Will like, like you said, I mean clearly a lot of the things did were, were much better in, in week two. Is it hard when that one play gets so much attention to, to also focus on the things that improved from one week to another? Uh, no, I mean I think it's I got to just focus on everything. It's not just the positives, not just the negatives. Uh, 
you know, being excited and, and building confidence on the positives and then learning from the negatives. So um, it's not putting too much stress on either one, but it's learning from, from all those things. How much is that the case, though, in any season where you're just having to get those live game reps, especially in a new system, to try and get more fluid as an offense? Yeah, I mean, hopefully you don't need them necessarily. You don't need those bumps, but, you know, it, it, you see it across the league. Uh, but I do know that as we get going, we're going to get more comfortable and more fluid and uh, just we're going to finally put together some complete games. I think we can all agree if if we play two complete games or even just a little bit more complete, uh, two two games were this close to 2-0. Oh. So we know that you know what we're capable of, and uh, we know that it's going to be a sight to see when everything comes together. How good did it feel to connect with Calvin, especially on the touchdown, because it seems like that that's been something that you and him have been working on since camp, trying to make sure you're on the same page. Yeah, I felt great. I felt confident with my deep ball on Sunday. Just I feel like I was... You know, when I was locked in on target and folk and uh, you know, decide making my decision on where I was going to go with the ball, I felt like it was ending up where I wanted it to. So it was cool to feel that and to see that and to gain that confidence in our in our chemistry. Just seeing him make that that play of just pulling through and, and getting to the ground and, and making something happen. Uh, so that was really cool. And we're just going to keep working on it and keep taking those shots. Uh, same thing on the one trailing. Like, I know I can. He can make that play, and we're going to keep taking those shots and keep trusting our guys. Um, and uh, and yeah, but that was that was cool to to feel after, especially missing him a couple of times week one. To what degree have you talked with the offensive line, or do you talk with the offensive line about what they're working on? And uh, you know, uh, coach talked a little bit about they need in-game reps on some stuff, but there's urgency paired with that. How familiar are you with what's developing and what the situations might be while while there's patience required? Yeah, I'm just familiar with you know what the game plan is and what what we're trying to get done as a unit, and I'm going to be there along the way to help them however I can. But uh, you know we got areas to improve in across the board, and they know that. And um, in certain areas of just our offense and our philosophy and how we want to run games, and if we want to get to the team that we know we can be, then we know we need to clean those things up. So um, no, I mean we're very locked in on at least pass protection and kind of what we're seeing and what we know our answers are or problems are. Um, and then in the run game, how I can help them with getting out of certain looks and re -ID re-IDing or stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we have we have, a lot, we have a lot of work to do across the board, and um, a lot of guys are going to have you know, opportunities to to play and to show up and make plays for us. So, I've got all the confidence in them, and just got to keep being a leader for them. Well, have you tried any non-football or non-traditional things in rewiring your brain, or is it more the commitment to reps and film, like you said off the top? Um, no, I think it's more so just football. Uh, I know that I think it's important, like on my off days, taking like those few hours to just get away from football, and a lot of that's just been sitting on the couch watching football. So it's not like I have anything much going on during the season other than what we have at hand. Um, but I wouldn't, wouldn't want it any other way. I find solace in this, and I think that that's just the best way that I'm going to improve is just putting all the focus that I can on on my job. Well, there's been a lot made about Callahan's sideline, you know mannerism when you threw that ball away. Um, I believe what you said in the past, though, is he's great in terms of behind the scenes and how he works and coaches with you. Just kind of explain the type of teacher and coach he is. And I'm assuming you look back at that and didn't take that to heart. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, he told us straight up, like, yeah, he's he's not a yeller and a screamer, but he can be. And, and there's certain situations that uh, – uh, allow for that and that definitely was one of those situations so I didn't I didn't bat an eye at it you know, I took the coaching and I knew I was, I was yelling at myself in my head the same way he was yelling at me so um, you know I know that it's 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 just an you know, emotional response that we all have after certain things like that and we were right back to it and he had obviously confidence in me right in that next play with taking that shot so um, that was cool to feel um, coming off kept coming back onto the field after that turnover even though you know came, came back with another one after that but uh, I, I I don't have any problem with how he handled himself, and uh, yeah, he's he's great mentality-wise, and I connect with that really well. You've talked a lot in the past about how you've evolved with how you respond in stressful moments, emotional moments. When these last two weeks have gone the way you have, do you feel like yeah. you're still evolving in that regard, or are you kind of settled into how you know how to react? I feel like I'm pretty settled in. Um, you know, I think we one of the important things. We talked about today as a team or as a group and just having confidence regardless of you know the seemingly disparity of the situation or moment um we got to come out here whether we're 2-0 0-2 3-0 3-1 you 
15 and 0, 0 and 15 with the same attitude, same confidence, knowing that we're going to go out there and beat the, beat the brakes off whoever we play. We need to have that confidence as a team, and we're building towards that. And it's great seeing guys coming out here on a Wednesday after a tough loss like that and playing with the intensity and focus that we did. And that's that's the only way that we're going to get ourselves in the best position to succeed on Sunday. So I'm, I'm proud of how we came out and did it today. Arms way didn't take many big hits in your scrambles, but would you call those slides or, or what? Yeah, what, what, what uh, this is you? this is why I don't <laughs> slide. But uh, um, it was kind of like I didn't remember <laughs> until the last second, and I just went down. Um, but yeah, I guess I can work on the technique a little bit. But it, it was nice not taking those hits. You spent a lot of time with Malik last year. You have possibility now to face off with him. What's that going to be like for you? I'm pumped. I mean, I, I was excited for him to get the opportunity that he did in Green Bay, and then was even more excited when, or obviously not excited because of you know, Jordan's situation, but it was cool for him to get the opportunity to play as soon as he did. And then for him to come into town, I know he's geared up and ready to um, to play, but uh, you know, lovely. We just talked the other day and uh, just going to go out there and not focus on that part of it and really just focus on our side, but it is an exciting, cool little kind of fold in the game. I know they make all kinds of resources available to you guys. When you use a word like rewiring, that sounds like something an expert could could help you do. Have you talked to anybody with an expert uh, expertise in something like that, or would you consider it? A uh, not in terms of like a sports psychologist, no. I've thought about it. Maybe if I wanted to connect with someone or do stuff with people that I have in the past, um, but I think my mind is in a healthy enough spot to to move on. But it might be something that I'll incorporate in the future for sure. What would the Packers do well this past Sunday, and what are what are some things you've got to be weary of facing that defense? Uh, yeah, weary of obviously you know the DC coming from being a college coach, and there's not a lot of film preseason games. You know, it's pretty vanilla, and they're not gonna didn't show off too much. And then the last couple of weeks, there are differences in game to game, and we know that we're gonna have new stuff that hasn't shown up at all. We're trying to use every resource that we can to kind of be ready for some of the non-traditional looks that he might uh, be throwing at us in certain situations. Um, but then personnel-wise, you know, they got they got dogs across the field. Um, I think it's all, all first-round picks on that defensive line. Really good secondary um, with the new defense and everything. You know, it's 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 they they're learning it too, and it's their first few times as a full group being able to play and get into these games. But you can tell that they are you know still very in tune with each other and in the spaces spaces of the defense. Um, and it's a, it's a tough defense to play against. We're going to have to take completions and just continue to get the ball down the field chunk by chunk and um, just stay on schedule uh, because it, they're, it's built for not allowing you know, a lot of shots. And uh, we've got to be smart with when we call them. And, and we've got to be smart with just taking the plays that are, that are there. So got a lot of respect for all their personnel. And it seems like they're, the new DC has gotten them in a good spot. And they're playing at a pretty high level. Like too early to determine, you know, any kind of tendencies that you might be able to identify on film for a new defense like that. Uh, I mean, we, we think we have a couple things, but you know, it's it's we we talk about the biggest key for us as an offense this week is sticking to our rules and trusting our eyes and and having you know plays that we are comfortable with and that we can go out there and run uh, without blinking against any coverage or against any look. Um, so that's the that's the thought process, you know, offensively and. We just got to make sure that we just play our game and trust our eyes and make sure that the coaches put us in the best position to succeed. Comes back and, and maybe not quite at 100% yet. Is there some adjustment that you guys have to deal with a little bit as opposed to what you were working with last year when, when he was you know, full speed the whole time? Uh, just adjustment with like reps and practice. Like, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's finally getting along where he's able to, you know, play the full practice and the full game the way that we want him to. So it's just I haven't been able to get those reps with him that I need and want uh, throughout the week. And I'm finally starting to feel him where he can get through it and uh, and we can work at the level where I need to to have the confidence going into Sunday. So, you know, we're going to have stuff for Hop and that are going to be really important for this offense. And we're, we're excited that he's back and we're going to keep incorporating him much more and more. There's criticism that comes off, obviously, when things don't go well. Do you find a way to just kind of shut all that out, uh, things on social media or TV, when those types of moments happen? Uh, yeah, I guess the thing I'm actually doing today, I get a new phone number. I don't know how my number got out there to the fans, but I got in, got in a lot of texts. So uh, that'll be nice to shut that part of life behind me. And I haven't opened social in the last couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, I just think that's the healthiest way to go about it. And um, yeah, I don't want to or care to see any things that people say about me. And uh, I'm just going to keep chugging along regardless of what they say. So um, yeah, but 
it sucks that the world is the way that it is and um, looking forward to having some privacy.